Okay, I think this thing is on. Hello, POE, and welcome to your e-learning day. Today, we are going to be learning about fluid power systems. Hello, class. I hope everyone is enjoying your home theater experience. So, a fluid power system is the idea that we can use a fluid, either a liquid or gas, to create some type of mechanical advantage by moving this fluid and producing either more force or creating an object to move. You've seen these systems before and I'm going to show you where. One of the first examples is this hydraulic press. There's a great YouTube channel just about hydraulic presses. It's a machine that exerts a lot of force. So we can see this is moving a fluid to create and crush these candles. So we're going to get into the inner working and how we can produce so much force to destroy something like candles. So a fluid power system, uh, one, like I said, uses a fluid to transmit power from one location to another. Typically, it is doing that with a purpose because it is either moving an object or it is creating a larger force. And we're going to see examples of both of those. So fluid power systems can be gas, which is pneumatics, the P is silent, or it can be liquid, hydraulics, to transfer this power. So we have our two types of systems. Hydraulics, right here, use liquid flowing from pressure to transmit power. So, a liquid hydraulic system can act as a solid because it compresses it so little, but really so much. It, it compresses and it moves back and forth. In this case, we have a system where this person is not creating a mechanical advantage except for moving these Wolverine claws. So he's using these syringes that he presses and exerts force on one end, we have force being released over here, resulting in movement, and that allows him to make these really cool claws that use a liquid or fluid system to move the Wolverine stuff. That's pretty sweet. All right, so now we have pneumatic systems, uh, which is the use of gas flow under pressure to transmit from one station to another, uh, gas acts like a spring, so we have it loaded up, and then it shoots out like a bling. Uh, and then gases have no definitive volume, so they're lighter than liquid, but that also makes them a little bit harder to control. Because they aren't uh, really, because they are just filling up whatever space they are in, it makes them harder to control because as soon as we release a gas into an environment, it's going to spread out pretty much evenly throughout the system. Liquids, not so much. They take longer to spread out like that. So they have no definitive volume. They are lighter than liquids. Uh, gases are affected by three things. Temperature, when we heat up a gas, those molecules move faster and faster. And then we have pressure and volume. Larger space, the gas spreads out more. Smaller space, it's more compact. So, we have some similarities and differences. The first thing I want to look at are similarities right here. Multiplication and variation of force. So, that allows us to create a system where we have less force applied and more force coming out, or the vice versa, as well as we are able to move things with both of these, like the claws or like those atomic Chuck E. Cheese robots. Uh, constant force and torque, that's with the pressure system, it's constantly moving, it's not very erratically because we have a sealed off space within a pneumatic system. Safe and hazardous environments, some of the best examples of pneumatic systems, something like, uh, or not pneumatic systems, but a hydraulic system, the claws of life, if you've ever seen firefighters, ambulance, ambulance workers, using those to remove doors off of car crashes, those are very powerful, powerful machines that use our hydraulic systems to create a lot of force very slowly to remove something out. So we can see that in our hydraulic systems right here, they use liquids, pneumatics use compressed gas. Uh, we have a slower, smoother motion within hydraulics versus a quicker, jumpier motion. For example, those jaws of life move very slow, but they exert a lot of force. Quicker, jumpier motion something like a nail gun that's using compressed air to shoot out a nail, or 
a jackhammer when construction workers are removing concrete on roads or something like that they use jackhammers that produces a lot of force very quickly so that is pneumatics so we have more precise within uh, like Obviously, we're going to use jaws of life to remove someone from a car. We're not going to use a nail gun, or we're not going to use a uh, jackhammer to remove someone out of there. It's not as precise. It's very hard to control. Uh, because new hydraulic systems use oils inside of the systems, they have a natural lubrication to it, which allows the systems to stay healthier for longer, and they don't need as much maintenance. With that said, all these systems do need quite a lot of maintenance. Uh, pneumatic systems require a lubricant because it is just a gas inside of there and the gas can dry out any lubricant that is in the system. So we have a hydraulic system that operates at a really high PSI and we produce a lot of power. Pneumatic systems do produce a lot of power but very instantaneously uh, and then they have to reset. So we have it operating at a lower PSI and produce less power. So we are going to get into what is known as Pascal's Law. He was a great engineering scientist that uh, came up with this formula, and his law is very important. An external pressure exerted by an enclosed fluid is transferred uniformly, that's the most important thing, throughout the volume of the fluid. So pressure at one point in the system is pressure throughout the entire system. That is an important note, we're gonna need that. So pressure equals force divided by area. This operates the same way that Ohm's law does. If we are looking for pressure, we cover up P, we have force divided by area. If we are looking for area, we cover up A, we get force divided by pressure. If we are looking for force, we cover up force, we have pressure times area. Our units for this unit is pounds divided by inch squared for pressure, and then we have force, which is in pounds, and area in squared. So let's try our first problem using this law. We have practice problem number one right here. How much pressure is produced when a four inch diameter cylinder and 200 pounds of input force is applied? So, are unknowns, we don't know the pressure, we don't know the area, though we have some information to find it, and we have our unknown of 20 pounds, our diameter is, we have our known of 120 force, and then we have our diameter of four. So, our area for a circle Area of circle, that is pi radius squared. So in this case, we are going to find our area right now. Our area is a diameter of four. So our pi times our radius of two squared, we find that out to be 12.57. So that is our area, 12.57. Uh, and then we are looking for pressure. So I cover up the P, we have force divided by area. So we get 120 divided by 12.57, and that equals 9.55 pounds per inch squared. Pretty straightforward, some good plug and chug with this. Uh, you are going to have to know the area of a circle. You're welcome to use Pascal's triangle to figure out these. But we've got another practice problem coming right at you. This next one right here. We have solved the pressure, solved for the pressure in the system and for the diameter of the second cylinder. So we have an unknown pressure area of both cylinders and the diameter of cylinder two. Our knowns that we have right here, the force at cylinder one is 15 pounds, the force at cylinder two is 375 pounds, and then the diameter at C1 is four inches. So, with these, we are going to solve for 
the pressure in this cylinder and the pressure in this cylinder is the same as the pressure in that cylinder. That's Pascal's law that is letting us know that. So what we want to do is set this up where we have our information over here. Diameter four, I'm gonna steal this from our last practice problem, that's 12.57. So in this one, I get my, I'm looking for the pressure, so I have force divided by area, 15 divided by 12.57, that equals 1.19. So our pressure throughout our entire system is 1.19 pounds per inch squared. Areas of both cylinders, we already found one of those areas. Now we are looking for the diameter of C2 and the area of the second cylinder. So now we know pressure, we know force, we're looking for area. So area is equal to force force divided by pressure. So in this case, we have our area is unknown, 375 divided by 1.19, we get 314.15. That is our area of our cylinder two. So that is area C2 area at C2. Cool. Now the last thing that we need to do is find our diameter of this. So if we are looking for that, we are going to plug this back into our, doo -doo -doo, we've got 314.15 is equal to our area of our circle, which is pi radius squared. So we'll divide by pi, divide by pi, and then square root it to get rid of the square. We find our radius is equal to 10, and our diameter is equal to 20. So we find out that this is equal to 20. All right. If that was too fast or confusing, please go through this again or send me or Mr. May an email. Now, in order to complete your assignment for today, we have one more practice problem. Uh, it is in the PDF that is with this assignment. It is where you found this video at. And it goes like this. Practice problem number three, a hydraulic lift system uses two five inch diameter cylinders. The system runs at a pressure of 3000 PSI. How much force is the system capable of exerting? So our unknowns, the area of both cylinders and the total force exerted. Our knowns are force at cylinder one, force at cylinder two, and the diameter of both cylinders. All right, I believe in you future engineers. Do your best. Take on practice problem number three.